Good morning. This is Cecil and Blues. Thank you for joining me today for this Final Fantasy XIV video. It is now four weeks to the release of Stormblood, with early access starting four days earlier. Last week, I focused on gear and how it was still possible to hit the level 60 maximum gear score of 270 as long as you started right away and devoted a lot of time to it. That ship has sailed, I'm afraid, so don't worry about it. Today, we're going to talk about crafting preparation, but first, as I'll mention at the top of every one of these videos leading up to the release of Stormblood, you must be caught up on the main scenario through patch 3.56, the Far Edge of Fate Part 2, in order to access the new Stormblood areas. Stop by Four Temps Manor in Ishgard or the Rising Stones in Mordona to look for the main scenario quests added since you last played. In order to complete the main scenario, you will need to have a minimum item level of 230 to access the final story dungeon. You can buy crafted gear from the market board, collect tomestones of lore and purchase gear from his mana, she's the one in the middle, get armor drops from the Alliance raid The Weeping City of Mahak, or farm frontlines and purchase gear from the disreputable priest at the Wolves Den Pier. Mix and match these methods in whatever way works to get you over 230. Okay, with main story stuff out of the way, let's talk crafting. The first thing to reconcile is that in Final Fantasy XIV, Omni-Crafting is the only real path to success. In order to construct a top-level crafting rotation, you will need access to level 50 skills from each of the crafting professions. It has been suggested by Yoshida that Stormblood is going to include adjustments to the specialist actions that may change things, but for right now, we should operate on the assumption that they will be about as effective at eliminating the problem as they were when they were introduced during Heaven's Ward. What this means is that if you're 100% new to crafting, you're going to have a rough road to hoe over the next four weeks. I'll get to you guys a little bit later in the video with suggestions, but for right now, let's talk to the level 60 crafters who want to know if they're prepared for Stormblood. We can use Heaven's Ward as a guide to see that level 51 recipes were considerably easier than 1, 2, and 3 star recipes that had been added throughout the 2.x patch cycle. They were easily craftable by players in even the lowest ranked level 50 crafting armor, and honestly still craftable in lower gear as well. If you are currently a level 60 crafter and you were doing any blue or red script activity, then whatever you're currently wearing is going to be good enough to get you through the door of Stormblood. The next important point is how fast the gear was upgraded. In Heaven's Ward, new sets of crafting armor were available for purchase at level 51 and 53. The level 51 armor was nearly as good as the top tier level 50 armor, and the level 53 set blows it out of the water. New accessories and main hand tools were available at level 52, which nearly beat out the artisan tools. Off hands were available at 53. Leveling crafting in Stormblood is not going to require a full set of item level 190 Ironworks crafting gear. It may make things a little bit easier at the start, but a set of item level 150 armor with a set of pre-60 accessories is going to work just fine, and they're available on the market board for a tenth the cost. Prices may vary from server to server, so double check your market board before making any final decisions, uh, the Script Exchange NPC in Idleshire does sell a set of level 130 crafting gear for blue scripts. It's probably pushing it, but honestly, it's, it's probably sufficient. Uh, the Splendors vendor, just to the left, sells item level 180 gear for blue scripts, and uh, they aren't much more expensive, but they are profession-specific, so it's going to bloat your armory bag. The exact same advice applies to fieldcraft gear. Don't throw away millions of gil on item level 190 ironworks gear when item level 150 gear is going to be good enough to do the job for leveling and is available for 10% the cost. So, if you're set on gear, what else do you need to worry about? I'd recommend verifying that you've completed all of your crafting profession quests. Open your journal and click the Complete button. You can select the icon for Class and Job Quest, which looks like cross swords, then choose Disciple of the Hand Quests from the dropdown. 
scroll through the list and make sure they all end with a level 60 quest. If not, Google should be able to direct you where it is you'll pick up the next quest in the series, assuming that it's not already in your active quest log. Anything below level 50 starts at the associated crafting guild, but it gets less consistent once you enter the Heaven's Ward arcs. Another thing you could do is stock up on buffs. The 20% boost items from Grand Company Squadron missions are a solid bet if you don't belong to a crafting guild that plans to burn rank 3 experience buffs during early access. You can earn a stack of 5 of these buffs once each week from the top rank of squadron missions. There are separate buffs for crafting and gathering available from different missions, so you'll have to choose which one you want each week. They last for two hours once you use them, and don't stack with free company experience boosts. On the other hand, I would hold off on stocking up on the company issue manuals that are for sale from your grand company quartermaster. 50% experience boost sounds pretty nice, but the rank 2 version burns out after only 100,000 experience points, which is almost nothing at level 60. The rank 2 books were introduced during Heaven's Ward's early access, so it's likely they'll introduce a rank 3 manual at the launch of 4.0. So for right now, stock up on Grand Company seals in order to purchase those new items when they are introduced at the start of early access. Another way to give yourself an experience boost would be to have a pile of collectible items in your inventory to turn into the House of Splendors as soon as early access begins. As long as their experience value is not drastically reduced above level 60, this should give you a significant advantage. Since the requested items shift every day at 1pm, you'll need to wait until about 12 hours before early access begins to make your move. And, if there's extended maintenance, you may not be able to do this at all. But it's a thought. The Moogle daily quests will almost certainly have reduced experience value at level 60 and above, much like the Ixel quests do at level 50, but it couldn't hurt to have three of them completed and ready to turn in at the start of early access. If you can think of anything I've overlooked, go ahead and toss it in the comments, but I think that's all the things max level crafters should need to worry about as early access approaches. Now let's circle back around for players who still have leveling to do. If you have a few professions in the level 50 to 60 range, you should be doing Moogle Beast Tribe quests in the Churning Mists every day. They're worth a ton of experience and take very little effort or time. But if you have a long ways to go on several professions, then you'll probably need to churn some Blue Script turn-ins. For gathering classes, you're going to want to rely mostly on blue script turn-ins, and if you're unfamiliar, nearly all gathering collectible nodes only appear for two and a half minutes every hour. You'll need to look up spawn locations and times to plan your routes based on the items Rowena is looking for on any given day. If you'd rather not be bothered with sticking to a schedule, you can grind appropriate level gathering nodes at your leisure. But circling back even further to crafters and gatherers below level 50, maybe even players who have never crafted before, but are thinking that maybe Stormblood is when they'll finally give it a shot, as I said earlier, you're going to have a tough road to hoe. Leveling guides that will take a crafter from level 15 to 50 rely heavily on leave quests, but will burn 50 to 60 leaves in the process. Leaves recharge back to 100 over the course of about two weeks, so this isn't going to be a great option for you unless you've only got a couple of professions left to level. The most popular guides operate on the assumption that you're going to be purchasing high quality versions of the needed items from the market board or having a level 60 crafter produce them for you. The market boards have been pretty barren recently, so you're going to want to either hire or befriend a crafter. The raw materials are more readily available for purchase off the market boards, or you can collect them yourself. A level 60 crafter is not going to need high quality ingredients in order to guarantee a high quality product for any craft that's below level 50, unless they're basically naked. If you have a long ways to go with several professions, you will need to focus largely on recipe grinding. 
For levels 1 through 20, if you have access to a free company house that has a material supplier NPC, you can basically park yourself in front of that NPC, craft anything you need, and buy all the materials from it. If you don't have access to a free company house, you can also buy materials from guild supplier NPCs located at each of the profession guilds, though these NPCs have a less comprehensive stock. Above level 20, in most cases, you'll be on your own to gather materials or purchase them from the market board. If you are trying to level all eight Disciples of the Hand, you will be best served leveling them evenly so you can cross-produce recipe components as well as collecting quest rewards from the guilds uh, every five levels. This will supplement your gear and make it so you are less required to buy things off the market board. You'll want to pick up accessories eventually to increase your CP pool, which will open up a more complex rotation and allow you to inflate your quality meter. That's where the experience comes from. While you can purchase company-issued engineering manuals, which will give you a 50% experience boost, and free company actions can provide 20% experience boost fairly easily, the quality bar can provide up to a 300% experience bonus. There's also a large bonus for crafting an item for the first time, but collecting diverse materials can be incredibly time-consuming. In most cases, you'll find it far more efficient to spam create the exact same item. You can also lean on the Ixel dailies, which are found in the Norse Shroud, to spare the strain on your regular leave allowance. I couldn't say for certain how many hours this would take all told, or what the cost in gil would be to speed it up. I was in a similar position during the lead-up to the launch of Heavensward, and I chose to only level a single crafting profession to 50 and focused on that profession at the start of Heavensward, along with the field craft professions Botany and Mining. I had to rely heavily on my friends to provide components every week when I was making my Red Scripts turn-ins, and without access to powerful cross-class abilities like Fire God's Blessing, I required high-quality components in order to meet the collectability requirements. Once every month or so, I'd burn through my leave allowances and level another profession to 50 to unlock their important cross-class abilities. When the Moogle quests became available, I started slowly progressing all of these jobs up to 60. Now I'm set to roll into Stormblood on equal footing with other crafters, but that was after two years of dragging my feet. If you want that all done in the course of the next four weeks, I'd estimate you're probably going to have to spend about two hours every five levels of each crafting job that you want to level. Pop in a Netflix series to keep you company for that long grind. Are there any important cross-class abilities past level 50? That's a good question, I'm glad you asked it. Yes, Muscle Memory from level 54 Culinarian and Maker's Mark from level 54 Goldsmith are both very strong depending on the situation. All the other crafting abilities have a level 54 skill that is basically the same just with a different elemental aspect. So you'll need three different crafting professions at level 54 or above in addition to whatever your main crafting profession you want to focus on is. Field craft profession shouldn't be ignored either. Self-providing resources is the number one way to increase your profit margins or decrease your costs if we're talking about quest turn-ins or things that you throw into the wood chipper for crafting scripts. Botany and mining are highly recommended. Most crafting ingredients for all professions come from them, and they're pretty straightforward. Fishing is a little more obtuse, and it's used in fewer recipes, so you can usually get away without it. But at the same time, it can be a really good source of gill if you do your research. Leveling Disciples of the Land is time-consuming, but mostly effortless. Find an interesting podcast and farm nodes in your level range. Use survival manuals purchased from your grand company to get a bonus experience, and update your gear once every 5 to 10 levels to avoid excessive missed attempts. Once you've leveled all the crafting and gathering professions to 60, you can listen to the start of this video again for suggestions on gear. If you've made it to the end of this overly long crafting preparation guide, hey there, thanks for hanging out. 
If you think I've missed anything, throw it down in the comments. I'll be back next week for another Countdown to Stormblood video. We will be focusing on Heavensward side story missions in that video, so I hope you'll stop by next Tuesday and check it out. Many more videos are on the way leading up to and after the release of Stormblood. You can subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos are posted, and you can follow me on Twitter to keep abreast of how an old man who plays video games sees the world. That's at its boats. Thanks again for watching this video, and I hope you have a great day.